There are two possible approaches to asset allocation, strategic asset allocation and tactical asset allocation. In this learning objective, we discuss tactical asset allocation and examine evidence relating to the performance of tactical asset allocation funds. So tactical asset allocation involves timing the market in order to shift the asset allocation across asset classes. For example, this would be making predictions about the future performances of the economy and financial markets. And if the investor thought that things were quite prosperous for the future, they would dynamically allocate a larger proportion of their wealth toward higher risk asset classes, such as equities. Whereas if there was a forecast that the economy and financial markets were going to perform poorly across the future, then they would dynamically allocate away from risky assets and into very low risk or risk free asset classes. Now, when engaging in tactical asset allocation, there are a range of different signals that funds tend to use. These signals include market sentiment, market valuation measures, and moving averages. So market sentiment is an intangible concept, but it's the idea that you can pick up the future movement of the market if you can gauge the general feeling of the populace and the investors within a market. There are a range of different ways that investors seek to gauge market sentiment. Uh, these can include measures from financial markets. For example, uh, there is a belief that when uh, IPOs are more prominent, so when there's a greater number of shares listing on a stock market, that reflects a positive sentiment within the market, and hence that might be periods of prosperity. Equally, recent studies and recent funds have tried to gauge market sentiment using the vast amounts of data that's available across the internet. So using things like Google search histories of investors and postings on social media. Uh, again, there's, there's a range of arguments that people suggest that a measure of overall sentiment can be derived and this can be potentially used to predict future market movements. Market valuation measures used in tactical asset allocation include the aggregate PE ratio and the term slope. So the aggregate PE ratio is the average price earnings ratio across a market. When this is low, it reflects current market prices are low as a multiple of expected future earnings. And that might be a time that is considered to be a good period to invest because stocks are cheap and it might be expected that uh, risky assets are going to increase in value in the future. The term slope is the difference in interest rates on long-term versus short-term securities. And this is used in tactical asset allocation due to the belief that if you have a, a downward sloping yield curve, so a yield curve whereby long-run interest rates are actually lower than short-run interest rates, then that is believed to be an indicator that economies may be about to perform poorly or may be about to enter into a recession. So tactical asset allocation funds would see a downward sloping yield curve as a signal that they need to invest in defensive asset classes. A third group of measures are moving averages. So moving averages is where you look at the current price or the current market index value compared with the average over a past period of time. And it's the belief that there is continuations in those indices. So when the current price index moves above the average from let's say the last 20, 50 or 200 days, depending on what window is used, then an investor would say that's a buy because that's a signal that the market is trending upwards compared to its recent past and investors should, should buy at that time. Whereas when the price moves below its moving average, that's arguably a signal to sell. So in many ways, people are, are allured to this idea of tactical asset allocation. Uh, and they're particularly allured because we've spoken earlier about the idea that more than 90% of variation in performance is actually explained by the asset allocation decision. So if markets are less than perfectly efficient and investors are able to predict future movements, there is huge scope to potentially outperform. But what are some of the detriments? Well, the detriments of tactical asset allocation, first of all, including switching at the wrong time. Okay, we know that when you dynamically switch, you actually can sometimes miss the best years of the market. Take the global financial crisis, for example. If an investor had predicted the global financial crisis and switched out of the market just prior to the, to the GFC, but let's imagine that they had a not switched back into equities until mid to late 2009. In that case, the investor would have actually missed a large proportion of the rebounds that occurred in early 2009, and hence while they would have benefited from predicting the GFC, that benefit would have been significantly moderated by the fact that they didn't participate in the subsequent rebound. 
So it's actually been predicted that uh, in order to even to, to break even, investors need to predict the market direction seven times out of ten. So they need to do much better than a, than a coin toss game. Obviously, with tactical allocation, asset allocation, investors are trading far more frequently. When you trade more frequently, this imposes higher transaction costs and also will result in a higher tax liability because investors will be selling their assets more frequently and in a market like Australia, whereby you can get a concessional discount on capital gains tax if you hold an asset for more than 12 months. If you're trading frequently, you're not, not holding assets for more than 12 months, so you're paying the full capital gains tax liability, hence higher tax rates. So the question is, given that there are significantly increased costs and risks associated with tactical asset allocation, is this a strategy worth pursuing? Well, the way that we can examine that is by looking at the performance of tactical asset allocating funds. And the evidence suggests that tactical asset allocating funds actually do not outperform the market. This is likely due to extremely increased transaction costs uh, compared to those who don't attempt to time, and the fact that markets are relatively efficient, one can debate the degree of efficiency, but markets are still relatively efficient. So it is quite difficult to predict future market movements with a high degree of accuracy. To borrow a quote from Warren Buffett, the only value of stock forecasters is to make fortune tellers look good. So Buffett and himself here is arguing that markets are relatively efficient, hence investment strategies that are based on making predictions about the future, which is exactly what tactical asset allocation is all about, uh, don't appear to have a whole lot of merit.